Hi everyone, welcome to The Superficial Spirit, where we explore how pop culture affects our spiritual experiences. My name is Peter Breeze. Join me while we ask a very important question. What the hell did pop culture do to me? Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Superficial Spirit. Thanks so much for joining me. This is my season finale. I can't believe that it's been a year of the podcast. Um, And actually, when I started the show, I didn't intend on doing seasons. I just started interviewing people once a week. But now that it's been a year, um, I wanted to wrap things up with an episode with just me. So there's no guests on the show this episode. It's just going to be me reflecting on um, the past year and what I've learned from the podcast, some of the standout topics um, or just moments that stand out to me and uh, wrap it all up. Not that I'm finishing the show, but wrap up the year. When I first started the show, I, I wanted to get to a year. I I have done so many creative projects in my life. I have always followed my creative impulses fearlessly. And for the majority of my life, I have prioritized my passions and my creativity and my dreams. And I've learned a lot through that. Um, When I was in my early 20s, I was just relentless and fearless and ruthless about the things that I wanted. And that created a lot of positive feedback a lot of things that I wanted happened. Um, you know, I really embodied the things that I believed in and the dreams that I had. I did my best to make them show on the outside so that if you met me randomly, it was really freaking obvious to you, a person who didn't know who I was, what it was that I wanted, what it was that I was about, who was Peter Breeze. Um, and I just wanted my whole essence and energy to be like an exclamation mark. I wanted to leave a mark on people. I wanted people to remember me. I wanted to cause a scene. I wanted to be infamous. I wanted to be trashy. I wanted, I, I, I didn't care what I was doing as long as when I left, you were thinking about me, you were talking about me. And I did that. I did that in high school. I did that in my 20s when I started partying. Um, I've always been, I w- I'm not always, I was motivated by, you know, creating that attention around myself. Very motivated by pop culture and by celebrities. And uh, that for a long time kept me moving in a kind of rapid forward momentum. Um, because what I wanted was so clear in my mind. I wanted to be a star. It was like I had laser focus and that gave me uh, parameters to live my life. So when I was growing up, when things were turbulent in my life or when I was confused about who I was or when I was dealing with drama at home, whatever it was, my dream of being a star and my belief in pop culture and my connection with celebrities is what kept me grounded. That was my guiding light. And so when I started this show, one, it was because I was laid off from my job and I had all this time on my hands and I needed to do something productive um, to get me through the days and to keep me focused. And two, I have always, always found such a huge, such huge value in pop culture. And I've always behind the scenes, behind the scenes, um, you know, to Evan and to my friends growing up have talked passionately about celebrities and like their effect on me. And I know that I'm not the only one. Okay. There was a while when I thought that being gay and wanting to be famous made me unique. (laughs) 
I thought I really did think like when I was growing up in Calgary, I was like, oh my God, like I'm gay. I, I'm I'm not scared of my sexuality. In fact, I I prefer to flaunt it because it made made people around me feel a kind of way. And I didn't know a lot of other gay people like that. When I moved to Vancouver and got into the club scene, I realized almost every single gay person I know wanted to become famous, but that's neither here nor there. So the the show was um was an exploration of Am I the only person who's had these kind of profound experiences from, from pop culture? Am I the only person who would go so far as to say pop culture is what instigated my spirituality? Because when I started following my dreams when I was a teenager, I didn't consciously uh, move towards spirituality. I wasn't trying to cultivate spirituality. I wasn't looking for inner peace or silence or flow. I just wanted to be famous, but the process of following your dreams, I mean, first you have to look inside and acknowledge something that you want. So that took a kind of self-awareness. And then you had to be able to look at the world around you and figure out what you needed to do to get from point A to point B. And so the process of taking my ideas and putting them into the into action um, gave me a sense of me being a part of the larger world. What do I have to do as Peter to become Peter fucking Breeze to make all these people look at me? And that was the beginning of my spiritual experience um, because I spent a lot of time thinking in my head. I spent a lot of time praying. I would say it was praying now. Back then, I wasn't consciously praying down on my knees. Being, Dear God, make me a celebrity, even though I probably said that. It was more of a natural curiosity. What do I need to do? to get the things that I want. And when I started the show, I, I wondered if other people were like that. You know, I, I have lots of friends who are drag queens, who are creatives, who are actors, who are business people. I have lots of people who, who, who completely embody the things that they wanted. And I wondered, did you find that from pop culture too? Like, were you also young and looking at the TV and being like, well, nobody in Alberta is like me, but when I watch Pamela Anderson on Baywatch... <laughs> I feel like that's more my my vibe. Like I resonated more with barbed wire than I did with the other eight graders in gym class. So I always felt like pop culture was my safe haven. And that's why I moved towards it and tried to emulate it. Um, and through the show, what I've learned is, yes, other people have had profound experiences from pop culture. But more importantly, people are not necessarily describing their experiences as spiritual you know like growing up if people are are watching britney spears or the spice girls or beyonce or whoever it is in hollywood that's giving them inspiration they may not look back at those moments and be like that was a spiritual moment for me or that instigated my self-awareness but i did learn from talking to these people that there was consistency between my experience and their experience. So my idea of what is spiritual started to evolve in the early conversations because, you know, I talked to people who described nightlife as being informative in the way that they developed as a person. Um, I heard people say this about drag. Um, some people said it about being on reality TV. Um, and so I realized that Yes, I would describe my experience as spiritual, but there are a lot of people who have had profound experiences because of pop culture that may not necessarily describe them as spiritual, and that's okay. After a year of talking about this, what I wanted to share today was my connection to pop culture has changed, and so has my idea of spirituality. And I'm going to see if I can unpack this in a way that um, makes sense and is engaging for you. First of all, the, the celebrities that I was really obsessed with and the, the part of pop culture that I was really attached to is, is being, is, let's see, how do I say this? Looking back at those times from 2021, I have a very different perspective. So when you think about like the tabloids, tabloid culture, that used to be the number one thing that I was fucking motivated by was being hounded by press. I could not imagine 
a more amazing experience than being hounded by paparazzi and people like Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears. They embodied that. And that's where I got all of my inspiration. It was about being bad and being scandalous and being too skinny and, um, you know, being famous for being famous. And a few things happened this year that um, I guess illuminated those areas for me. Um, one was the Paris Hilton documentary where she talked about how she created her persona because of trauma that happened when she was a kid. And over the course of the two hour documentary, she basically breaks down um, how her being in these traumatic situations in the um, in the uh, they, they weren't what are they they were like her family sent her to these places because she was cr she was being bad at home and they wanted her to be more disciplined and she dealt with a lot of trauma in these places she was locked in rooms and abused and she spoke out about this and that's what motivated her to create Paris Hilton the persona and the brand and I'm watching this documentary and I'm like okay that's exactly what I did at the club I had a lot of trauma when I was a kid my dad died. I was gay. I wouldn't say that being gay is traumatic, but I was different and I had to I had to do my best to fit in when I knew that I didn't and that creates a sense of anxiety and tension in every kind of social interaction growing up. You know, people didn't know if I was a girl or a boy. Um I had a really high voice. I was super effeminate. Um and that created a like constant um anxiety. I was probably in just like constant fight or flight mode like growing up. Um and so when I heard Paris talking about that, I was like, well, that actually is validating that Paris and I have a similar self-actualization journey. She was born rich. It was easy for her to become famous, but it was validating. It also made me realize she was just another person experiencing pain that tried to make it better by transforming herself. And so when I watched the documentary, it was like I could put that illusion to sleep because I was validated that I had that connection with her and shared journey. And also I felt like I didn't need to be curious about it anymore. I understood it completely. It was, yeah, she was just like any other queer person who goes into the club and creates a brand new fucking image because they don't want to be the person that they were before they went there. And that made me feel good, but also was like, okay, don't need to explore Paris anymore. Got it. Tied it in a boat, moving on. Then free Britney, the free Britney, the free Britney conversation was happening way before the pandemic. Um, and I think a lot of things came to light over this past year with the free Britney movie movement, specifically that documentary, um, which was called framing Britney Spears, where they really just took a microscope to her career um, and the way that the media used to treat her and the, the turbulent times that she's faced as a public figure, you know, where her public life, we basically consumed as entertainment. And I remember finishing that documentary and being like, I felt bad that I was trying to emulate such destructive behavior in my own life because I wanted so bad to be famous. And now with some distance and looking at somebody like Britney who suffered so much at the hands of fame and how I followed that journey, not not as like um, a curious fan who wanted to know if she was okay, but as like a rabid pop culture freak who wanted to see a celebrity spiral out of control. Ultimately, I could not believe that Britney shaved her head. I could not believe that she couldn't go to Starbucks without having a hundred cars around her taking her picture. And instead of the message of, wow, fame is really toxic. I'm like, wow, the only way to be worth anything is to have a constant chaos in your life. And so when you don't have paparazzi, you replace that with drugs, alcohol, turbulent relationships, whatever. Chaos is chaos. And I it, it sort of planted the seed that chaos equals genius or like to be destructive is the only way to become a legend. Like that kind of rock star, tragic rock star, becoming a legend, that kind of thing. Courtney Love was a big instigator in that for me too. But when I watched that documentary, it really was the first time, and I know this might sound silly to those of you who aren't so wrapped up in pop culture, but like I'm sure a lot of you who watched Britney from afar were like, man, that is so sad. You weren't looking at it like it was inspiring, like I was and trying to emulate it in every fucking way possible. But when I saw the documentary and when the conversation about what happened to Britney and girls like Paris and Lindsay came out, it just like, it was like the curtains opened, the rose colored glasses came off. And 
I felt for the first time I was seeing that these 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 women, these girls, these women were just people who happened to become famous and were basically consumed for our entertainment in the the hardest parts of their lives, the most turbulent parts of their personal lives were put on display. And I just was turned off from it instantly. And I, there was a lot of speculation online about whether or not Britney was being held captive. And there's all these conspiracy theories. And Evan keep kept telling me, and he's been telling me this for a while, leave Britney alone. Not like Chris Crocker, leave Britney alone. But like, if you are a real fan, you need to stop giving all of this narrative so much attention. And when he said that initially, I was like, I, I don't know. I'm a fan. I need to stay informed. But now I feel like I'm pulling away from that and realizing that Britney Spears most likely just doesn't have a good relationship with fame and in all honesty, probably appreciates her fans, but doesn't really want to be a celebrity. If we're being completely honest, she probably loves performing. She probably had some amazing experiences throughout her career. But if we go by the things that she said in interviews and the way that she's living her life, she wants to move away from it. She wants her biggest dream is to be anonymous, to walk down the street, to not have people bothering her, to not have documentaries out about her life. And when you realize that the biggest source of your inform the biggest source of your inspiration is actually pushing themselves away from the life that you craved. It's like, why, why am I craving this so bad? Why is it such a well of inspiration if it's causing this person so much pain? Celebrities like Lady Gaga also made a whole point of like fame being the driving force of their career. Madonna, same thing. But Maga Ma Magaga. <laughs> but Gaga more recently, you know, her first album was The Fame. Right? Yeah, it was called The Fame. Um, that was her whole shtick. I'm becoming a star. She wanted to be a part of cop. She was like a pop culture disruptor. And then in her most recent album, her lyrics are singing about how she doesn't like being famous. It's a trap. It's painful for her. Um, that, all of those things combined. Um, also social media, watching friends of mine go on reality TV shows, sh watching friends of mine go on reality TV shows and having having them be torn apart by rabid drag race fans uh, was also like who in their right fucking mind would voluntarily walk into it's, it's like the, the Romans, the, the Coliseum where you enter this zeitgeist of being a reality star. Let's like, let's use drag race. For example, you work your whole, I mean, maybe not your whole life if you're an 18 year old drag queen who gets on drag race, but your dream comes true, you're on TV suddenly, and instantly you are being torn apart on social media. When I was in the club and I really wanted to be famous, social media was not a big part of my journey. It was not there. Facebook was starting to come around. Like my first Facebook name was Peter fucking Breeze. And I remember my statuses were like, Peter Breeze is dancing on tables. Peter Breeze is doing lines. Peter Breeze is with Lindsay Lohan. Um, that was before there was likes and follows and all of that. Um, but social media has evolved fame. It has made it into not, there, there used to be celebrities that everybody in the world could agree that is a famous person that is a movie star like tom hank um, tom hanks tom cruise cameron diaz these julia roberts like celebrities that everybody could point to and be like that is a celebrity now it's like who's famous to you because if i was at a restaurant and Alyssa edwards walked in or the long island medium or one of the real housewives from salt lake city I would be like, holy shit, there's, that's one of the celebrities that I like. And everybody else in the restaurant would be like, who is that? And so fame has evolved. And I think the toxic nature of social media has also made me not want to pursue fame. So starting this podcast, I was like, I can't wait to find more people who find spirituality and profound experiences in pop culture. And now at the end of this year, I'm like, wow, I really put a lot of weight in toxic behaviors and illusions. Ultimately, I don't regret the way that I lived. I don't, 
like I, I don't have any shame about the fact that I wanted to be Paris Hilton or the Club Kids or Britney Spears, and I've defended those people fervently. Like I'm not embarrassed by that. That's a big part of who I am, but. I do see it in a different light now. And I think talking to so many people throughout this past year, 52, um, I realized that that was a moment in my life. And this podcast is like the home stretch of me being able to put that chapter to bed. I have thoroughly (laughs) explored my relationship with pop culture, both with this podcast over the past year, but also with my music, with my writing, with my interpersonal relationships, with my therapist, through meditation. Like when I say my desire for fame and my relationship with pop culture opened me up to God, that is not an understatement. It gave me a sense of belonging and a, and a sense of purpose it grounded me when everything around me was turbulent. And I I left my 20s and basically spent the first five years of my 30s trying to understand what the fuck just happened. How did I give so much of my life into a dream that didn't actually come true? Was I stupid? Did I believe something that wasn't true? Or was I just another person on the planet with big dreams and it just didn't work out for me? That might sound sad, but it's not. I was a gay kid from Alberta. I didn't have any family in show business. Nobody was out there teaching me the ropes. I had to do everything myself. So I did have to unravel my dreams from my sense of self because when you have big dreams and they don't come true, it fucking sucks. And I know I'm not the only person out there whose life did not turn out the way that they wanted it to be. And I just happened to be a person where every time I saw a celebrity on TV or in a magazine, it gave me anxiety because I felt like a fucking failure. Social media amplified that because I had friends who were becoming famous or I was perceiving them to become famous. And it was really, really, really hard for me to untie the knot of illusion, self-esteem, self-worth, dreams, ambition, and who I am at my core who I am without my dreams, who I am without the image that I wanted people to see, that I still want people to see. My relationship with spirituality has simplified when I first started my conscious uh, effort to pursue spirituality, where I started learning about meditation and in my early days, it was really focused around like tarot and psychics and stuff like that. I knew there was something about it that resonated with me and it felt really, really good. And that happened about eight years ago when I first met Evan is when I really started focusing on meditating and, and trying to cultivate spirituality in my life in a conscious way. And that was really wrapped up in my dreams at first. Like, how do I use meditation to become famous? How do I use meditation to get rich? How do I use meditation to fuck X, Y, Z. I don't know. It was a means to an end. And I talked to a lot of people on the show who, a lot of queer folks who didn't, I, who said, I'm not spiritual. I'm not religious. I'm not religious. And if there's one thing that I want people to know so desperately, like so, so bad is that spirituality can be whatever you want it to be. It has nothing to do with religion. It can. If you are called to a religion and it makes you feel great and it empowers you, go be religious. Go be a nun. But for me, my spirituality is daily meditation, cultivating inner peace and like space inside my body so that I feel clear and confident. And it's about being aware and mindful. It's really simple. It is really really simple. It wasn't at the beginning, but I really want people who feel, who attach spirituality to modern ideas of spirituality, like yoga, um, manifesting, psychics, influencers, cults, anything that is sort of outside of them that is telling you this is what spirituality is, I would question. The biggest advice I can give you is if you are curious about spirituality is to look inside, 
look into meditation because honestly, nothing bad can happen from you taking five minutes a day to sit in silence and focus on your breath. Nothing bad can happen. Bad things can happen if you put your life in somebody else's hand that you don't know. Bad things can happen if you invest money that you don't have into a program that you don't know whether or not it's going to help you. Bad things can happen if you go to Costa Rica for an ayahuasca retreat with a bunch of strangers and you're alone and bad things happen. I would say start small, keep your faith internal and cultivate what feels right for you. I don't know what the next stage is for my for my um, the superficial spirit because I love the process of podcasting. I I love it so 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 much, and I know that I'm going to continue. Uh, for those of you who've listened all year, thank you so much. I am working on two new projects right now that are outside of this show that are podcasts. So stay tuned for that. And if you have any ideas or any comments or concerns about the show, anything that stands out to you or any ideas, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm at Peter Breeze on all social media. And I just want to leave you with, ooh, I actually read something. Hang on. I'm going to go get my book. So I've gotten really into sci-fi novels over the past year, and I'm reading right now Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. It's amazing. And right before I sat down to record this, um, there was this passage that I, I thought was a great way to, I wanted to share it with you. And it's this, I died as mineral and became a plant. I died as plant and rose to animal. I died as animal and I was human. Why should I fear? When was I less by dying? Yet once more I shall die human, to soar with angels blessed above. And when I sacrifice my angel soul, I shall become what no mind ever conceived. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for being with me. I love you so much and I will see you soon. Oh, 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 oh,